Recently, I played through and reviewed the latest entry in the long-running Contra series in Contra Operation Galuga on the channel. And if you watched that review, you know the love and respect that I have for both Contra as a series and Konami as a developer. In my review of Operation Galuga, many of you left spirited comments about how much you appreciate Contra Shattered Soldier, which was the main driving force for me to want to return to Shattered Soldier 22 years later with a fresh set of eyes. So I wanted to thank the community for making this video possible today. Now, when it comes to hooking up retro consoles to modern day displays, things can be a little tricky, but I do have a lot of experience in this area so in this next segment, I'm going to briefly show you guys how I'm connecting my original PS2 hardware to achieve the best possible picture out of it. What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to my review of Contra Shattered Soldier on the PlayStation 2. And before I get things started, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about how I'm going to be connecting my PlayStation 2 to my projector. So. I'm going to be using these cables right here. It's by a company called Pound and it's an HD link cable. And essentially, as it says on the back, one thing that's really cool is you can play PS1 games and it will work as well. So it'll upconvert PS1 games to 720p and it uses a high definition RGB signal. So let's get things started. What I'm going to do next, guys, is I'm going to give you a kind of zoomed out view so you can see what I'm working with here, the screen that I'm gonna be playing this on. And I'm gonna give you just a little bit of gameplay footage so you guys can see it and then kind of hear the surround sound. I'm hoping it will come through on this microphone here, but I want you guys to just be able to get an idea of what I'm working with and how I'm trying to re-experience Contra Shattered Soldier in a modern day setup. All right, guys, just to give you a little bit of context, this is the TV that I'm usually using. This is a Sony 85 inch TV. The specific model is the X90. This is the TV that's basically uh, made for the PlayStation 5, okay? We're not gonna be playing on this TV though. Although this TV is awesome, I love it. We're actually gonna be playing on this TV right up here. So I'm gonna pull this down and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like with Contra Shattered Soldier running on this screen through the BenQ X3100i projector, which is a 4K gaming projector, upscaled to 720p, which is the max output for the PlayStation 2 hardware. Okay, step one's done. Now we're gonna get the projector turned on. I'm gonna show you guys how it looks. Okay guys, now the projector's on and you can see just how huge this screen actually is. I'm six feet tall. I have a pretty long wingspan. And as you can see, this projector absolutely dwarfs me, okay? So now let's see how the PlayStation 2 looks.
Now to kick off this review, let me briefly mention the story. As with any Contra game, it's going to be light in the story department, but nobody has ever played the Contra games for their story. Nonetheless, the story takes place in the year 2642, where Earth remains scarred from previous alien wars as environmental problems grow beyond humanity's control. 80% of the planet's population died off due to a hypermagnetic weapons grid malfunctioning during development. Contra Shattered Soldier is well known for being the game that got the Contra series back on track, at least for a little while, and that's largely because after commissioning Appaloosu Interactive for the development of Contra Legacy of War and C, the Contra Adventure on PlayStation 1, Konami assigned their own internal Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo team to work on Shattered Soldier. Nobuya Nakazato, whom was the director of Alien Wars and Hardcore, was in charge of the game's direction, design, and scenario. Fun fact, a few years before the announcement of Shattered Soldier, Konami had plans for a Nintendo 64 installment in the series titled Contra Spirits 64 that would have been handled by Konami Computer Entertainment Osaka, but those plans were unfortunately aborted. I I think we would have all loved to have seen a possible four-player Contra game on the Nintendo 64. Diving in now to the gameplay and controls, Shattered Soldier plays much like the previous Contra games from the 8 and especially the 16-bit era, except now we're given more control over the character. For example, you can press R2 to lock Bill into place, allowing you to aim your weapon without moving. Another cool feature is that by pressing L2, you can run the opposite direction while still facing and firing away at your enemy. This is actually really useful in certain scenarios, like when you are fighting this giant enemy worm in Stage 3, where you have to run from each side of the screen, and by pressing L2, it allows you to run and fire in the worm's direction at the same time. I'm actually sort of surprised the L2 control feature didn't make it into Operation Galuga. Outside of that, you have three weapon options that include your standard machine gun, the flamethrower, and the mine launcher. All three weapons feature their own unique charge shot with the circle button to fire either a round sweep, energy shot, or homing missiles which I found myself using as often as possible throughout the game. Now when it comes to the game's graphics, I gotta say that for being a 22 year old game, the graphics have held up better than I expected. Now as you guys know, I also did my best to make sure I got the best possible picture out of my PS2, and of course to do that I used the HD link cables. Now I did have some initial concerns that I may run into input lag using the pound HD cables, but thankfully, those concerns were immediately squashed. Additionally, I played through the entirety of the game, as you guys saw, on my BenQ X3100i gaming projector on a 150 inch screen, and I was a little worried about how a PS2 era game might look blown up on a 150 inch screen, but I gotta say it holds up quite nicely here in 2024. In case you are wondering, Contra on the PS2 is running at a smooth 60 frames per second, and at no point did I witness a dip beyond 60 frames per second. Now in my review of Contra Operation Galuga, you guys left a lot of comments comparing the soundtrack direction between Operation Galuga and Shattered Soldier, and I can hear exactly what you guys are talking about now. Operation Galuga's soundtrack sounds like classic Contra through and through, while Shattered Soldier has a total heavy metal sound to it, which I personally really enjoy. I made sure to play the game on my 7.1 surround sound, with the volume turned up to really maximize my overall experience. Everything here sounds great though, from the music to the sound effects, it all hits really hard. So, who is this game for? As always, this is going to be for fans of the run and gun genre, so Contra fans, Metal Slug, this is your cup of tea. Contra fans who have never played this game, or maybe, if you're like me, you played it 20 years ago and you haven't touched it since, I would say every Contra fan owes it to themselves 
to return back to this game and play it. Now, when it comes to the game's overall content, there's not a ton of content here, but that's not unusual for the Contra series or other run and gun games. Only with the recent release of Galuga did we receive some additional content. I was able to beat the game in a few hours. So one thing though that's pretty cool and will have the hardcore fans returning for more Contra is that there's a few cool unlockables including a sixth level and a final boss. But to unlock these levels, you'll need to obtain an A or S rank on mission five a C or B rank on mission six, and an A or S rank on the final boss. Doing so on each mission will unlock some extra content that purists will no doubt appreciate. To maximize your score and earn a higher rank, you'll need to not only focus on beating the level, but killing every enemy along the way to earn a high hit rate percentage, which is shown in the game's HUD as well as making sure you die as little as possible. Each time you die, you'll lose one point, and if you have to use a continue, you'll lose out on 10 points. As with all Contra games, they are known for their sometimes extreme level of difficulty. Contra will never be a walk in the park. It's the type of game that is easy to learn, but hard to master. You'll need to memorize your enemy's attack patterns if you want to unlock the additional levels and bosses and see the game's true ending. Players will have to put in some real work if they want to see the end credits and honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. Now when it comes to the game's emotion and charm, Shattered Soldier is classic Contra through and through and honestly, this was a total nostalgic trip for me and even if you've never played Shattered Soldier, when it originally came out like I did, Everyone who played the 8 and 16-bit Contra games but didn't play Shattered Soldier will still feel the same level of nostalgia because everything about Contra Shattered Soldier just drips of the classic Contra formula. Talking now about the game's replayability, the replay value is pretty solid if you are determined to obtain all the game's unlockables and by earning at least an A rank on all the missions, which I just talked about earlier in the content chapter. So naturally, if you decide to unlock everything, you will get more bang for your buck. Now, since this is the PlayStation 2 era, trophies haven't even been invented yet, so your real trophy is going to be obtaining the unlockables and witnessing the game's real ending. All right, guys, let's talk about the fun factor because everything I've discussed up until this point won't matter if the game isn't fun, right? Well, good news. The game was an absolute blast from beginning to end and over again because I ended up playing a handful of times so I could unlock all the additional content. Now, seeing as how this is a PS2 game in 2002, we were still in the infancy stage of online gaming on consoles, meaning there is no online co-op. So if you wanna play multiplayer, you're gonna have to do it the old school way and invite a friend over to your house. Now, with all that said, guys, I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. Contra Shattered Soldier for PlayStation 2 was a very critical development for Contra's history because it's the game that put Contra back on the winning path after Konami had released two games back to back for the PS1 that were so bad that IGN famously awarded C, the Contra Adventure, a one out of 10. Had Contra Shattered Soldier reviewed as poorly as the PS1 games, Konami could have thrown in the towel on the entire series. But because of Shattered Soldier's success, the series lives on today through its most recent release, Operation Galuga. And once again, we find ourselves in the same position as we did 22 years ago. Prior to 2024's Operation Galuga, five years earlier, Konami had released one of its worst reviewed Contra games in Contra Rogue Corps, which sits at a 52% overall Metacritic score. My hope going forward is that Konami and WayForward might look to the successes of Operation Galuga while taking some inspiration from past titles like Shattered Soldier. For example, I enjoyed the music in both Operation Galuga and Shattered Soldier, but 
I think its soundtrack could be taken to another level by incorporating a perfect blend of both games. Give me the classic Contra themes we heard in Operation Galuga and merge it with Shattered Soldier's heavy metal sounds. If you could ask Konami and WayForward to implement one thing in their next Contra game, what would it be? Let me know in the comments section below, and if we're lucky, maybe, just maybe, our voices will be heard, and the Contra franchise can avoid its past mistakes, and instead, choose to build off the things Contra does best. As always, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day. Remember, you're never told to play video games.